I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode, we bring latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this episode, we're joined by b and advisor Tom Cowell to discuss some issues around lameness appearing in flocks at present. Tom discusses some of the predisposing factors we see in young lambs and the need for early intervention at the first line of lameness. We discuss what the treatment options are, with Tom putting particular emphasis on the importance of good handling facilities in tackling some of these issues on farms. With many of us clients having invested in batch foot bat facilities in recent years, we finish up discussing how this has helped produce the overall instance of limits in our flocks, as well as some of the other benefits to this change. We start off, however, with Tom discussing how scald is a main problem in young lambs at the moment. If you're, if you're a sheep farmer, all sheep farmers have, have lame sheep, and we know that uh, whether it's a lame yo or a lame lamb, that's going to affect their thrive. Like. So from now on, um, Generally, we see scald as, as, as the main cause of, of lameness in young lambs. You can see a big variation across, across flocks there where you could have low incidence and high incidence. Um, and it's generally more of a, a risk factor where, where you have high stocking rates, where you have uh, moist conditions like we have now, and where you have long grass, maybe we might not have that problem now, like, but it may be more of a problem as we go, go through the summer. And also areas in the field where, where sheep kind of congregate or gather along feeders uh, can also increase the incidence. Like you just mentioned there, Tom, the first real problem we see in lambs at this time of year is scald. I suppose just to differentiate that maybe from four or some of the other conditions that we see on farms, you might just give us the kind of, some of the key differences in them. Generally, you'd see now, you know, farmers have lame lambs at, uh, and uh, hopefully at this stage in lambs, uh, generally young lambs, you wouldn't have foot rot, but you may have foot rot in the yews. And I suppose foot rot in the yews, there's evidence there now that that's predisposing to um, lameness, uh, scald appearing in the, in the lambs as well. Can, so it can be spread from one to the other. So generally with scald there, the, the skin between the cleats becomes uh, red and swollen. And it's, you can see it when you part the two cleats there, you see it's, it's covered in a thin layer of, of white discharge, very painful for the, for the lambs. And that's mainly why it, why it affects their, their, um, their thrive. And it's caused by a bacteria and that bacteria survives in the environment. So basically, you know, it's, it's always there. That's why, why sheep farmers always have, have scald year in, year out. Um, and as I say, it, it spreads rapidly in warm, wet conditions. And, you know, the thing with scald today, you go out, you could have, you know, two lambs with scald. By the end of the week, you could have 20 or more lambs with scald. So it spreads fairly rapidly throughout the flock. And, you know, if left untreated, treated, like, you know, you could end up with 30 or 40% of your lambs with scald very rapidly. Like Tom, with scald, look, obviously the lambs, you know, painful, it's not come back to performance. Early intervention is really key for treating that. Just in terms of treatment, Tom, like, what's the best approach to treating scald in young lambs? Yeah, what you said there, like uh, Kieran, early intervention is the primary control measure, and, and prevention is always better than cure. Um, it's a, generally a entire uh, flock treatment is, is is a must. Like, but uh, you know, where where you have smaller flocks um, and where numbers are small, and you see individual lambs early on uh, be lame due to scald, some farmers would tend to use uh, an antibiotic spray like you know but there's a lot of manual work on that like but in general like you know it's a, it's a whole flock um uh, approach that we need the, the whole flock foot band look i suppose the challenge tom in some of them cases is difficult handling large number of lambs particularly trying to get them going through foot baths and different things at this stage you know the facilities what can we look at there to improve from point of view getting lambs foot bathed and even as the season progresses controlling some other foot issues you know good handling facilities are are a must on on, on most um, sheep uh, flocks with uh, batch foot bathing facilities too, you know, they're essential and not only to reduce labor, but uh, to facilitate the, you know, prevention of, of, um, of scald. So well, I mentioned there the topical sprays, like, you know, but the other one, you know, routine foot bathing and either a 10% zinc sulfate or copper sulfate solution uh, is probably the best option. And what farmers see, like, you know, the response to that treatment is normally quite rapid. Like, you know, you you have a, have a lame lambs and you go out the field maybe two or three days later, like, you know, that lameness is gone. Like. And like, look, it, it's the one as the year progresses, you're keeping some of the other issues at bay. Like a lot of your clients and over the years would have moved more towards batch foot bats. Like the advantage of them, Tom, over 
you know, maybe some more temporary setups. Where do you see that having a big role in control of footages? Yeah, so um, I suppose like the, the principles behind foot bathing is the sheep should stand in the solution for, for two to three minutes and then stand in a clean, dry yard, like preferably concrete, for at least another 30 minutes uh, for the solution to dry into the hoof. You know, and where your facilities aren't good and sheep stand in muddy areas, like, you know, you're based, it's basically a waste of time. So a good few of my clients who had issues with lameness in the past uh, would now routinely um, use batch foot baths to, to, um, to treat the, for, for, for scald, like, so the batch foot bath is, you know, it's it's an area made up maybe the pen or an, an a concrete area where it can hold the solution. Like so, normally the solution is about uh, five centimeters uh, in, 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 in deep, um, so it covers the entire hoof. Um, the sheep go into it and uh, stand in it for two or three uh, minutes. Like so, it, it could be. A batch of yos. The easiest way, you know, with young lambs is to put the lambs in along with the yos. Like, you know, so you need enough space for the yos and lambs to stand in that uh, batch foot bath. And then, you know, farmers at this time of the year they'll be taking the sheep in to to do other tasks with them. Like, you know, and and there's plenty of tasks that you're doing, you know, during the year there. Like, you know, where you're gathering them. Like, is it for coccidiosis treatment? Maybe nematodiarus treatment now this time of the year. And as the year goes on, like you, you were bringing them in again for a low fi prevention and then probably for shearing and for dosing later on and then for, for drafting. Like, so a lot of my clients would, each time they bring them in, they're, they're, the sheep actually stand on, on, the, on, the, on the foot bath. Um, and then probably more importantly, then they have an area where when the sheep leaves the foot bath or leaves the, the handling facility after, after some sort of treatment, they can actually stand on a concrete area then for, for about uh, 30 minutes to allow the solution to actually dry into the hoof. And that's vitally important as well. Like, you know, there's no point in uh, run, doing all the work with them, standing in a batch foot bath, run them through a race and then uh, letting them back out to sit away to a, a muddy gap in the field. Like, you know, you're basically wasting your time doing that. That area kind of half doubles up, Tom, as a holding area post-treatment. So they get, they're getting through it every single time they go through the yard. Yeah. So yeah, every time you have them in, and and the one thing we'd uh, we'd see, like you know, the farmers that routinely foot bathe their their lambs, maybe every two to three weeks over the, the course of the season, like that would be taking them in six or seven times, like you know, over over their over their lifetime or or up until up until weaning anyway. You know, they, they don't have lame lambs, like you know, so that's it, it just, does work. That's what I was just going to ask you. Like you followed a lot of clients have took this approach over the years. I suppose that's the starting you've seen on the farms. The challenge of dealing with lame sheep or the instance in the flock drops off dramatically within the first year or so. Yeah, and, and probably the, that, that's true. And, and probably the advice we would give to any, any young farmer to start out into sheep, like, you know, it's the first thing that probably, apart from maybe good fences and set up a paddock system, like, you know, the first thing is to put in a good handling facility and a batch foot bath for a foot bathing sheep, like, you know, be real important that they do that because, you know, when around treating uh, lame sheep on your farm um, is very labour intensive, and the other thing as well, you know, that there's evidence there now that you know that if you don't control the skull, that it'll eventually lead to foot rot, uh, uh, and then that's an even bigger issue in your farm. Then when you when you trying to control foot rot, the first stage is control of skull, and, and by doing that, like you know, you will reduce the, the incidence. You might eliminate it, but you'll reduce the incidence dramatically, like of, of foot rot and, and other lameness on the farm. It's just one of those things some of the moment have you have to be very conscious of, but early intervention, early treatment is obviously key to controlling it. Yeah, and and you know, if you haven't got the facilities now, like you know, it's not there some farmers have put you know, they haven't spent a, a lot of money on them, like you know, but been, been clever like and, and uh matching it up uh with your existing facilities and a bit of extra concrete, like just and creating an area that 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 uh, can hold the liquid like and um is, is um can be fairly cost effective and, and will dramatically reduce your, your labour input and uh, reduce the lameness as well. It's probably it's like the hidden cost is obviously the, the reducing the lameness, reducing that performance drop is one, but just even in terms of the treatment cost, I mean, you're actually probably reducing your treatment cost by going that batch for but that initial investment saves over a period of years, both in terms of products used and the amount of times you have to go back at them and do it. 
Yeah, and the other thing is as well, like you know, if you if you have the batch footpath and you have it indoors, like you know, um, because of all the rainfall we have, especially up in the west here, you know, the, the zinc sulfate or whatever copper sulfate you're using um, isn't uh, isn't being diluted by rain, like you know, and, and the provided it doesn't get really dirty, like you know, it can last for you know, you get five or six treatments out of it, like you know, and uh, it's fairly cost effective that way. Tom, always good getting your views on different issues crop up and farms. Good having you on with us today. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Kieran. Okay, we'll have to finish up at this point. Again, some very useful information from Tom in our podcast. I suppose well, the key thing at the moment, at the first signs of lameness and lambs, it needs prompt treatment to avoid any performance setback or the opportunity for other infections to take hold in the flock. Again, Tom highlighted the need for good facilities and how that investment in a batch foot bath really pays dividends both from a reducing lameness point of view, performance point of view and labour input point of view long term on farms. So something worth considering for your own. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates from the Sheep Programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chaga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and listen in to any of our episodes.